appreciate everyone sat down. We were just doing a sound check. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome to everyone here in attendance and everyone who is joining us on Zoom this morning. We begin with words most appropriate on a Shabbat morning such as this. Hine Matov, indeed how good and how pleasant it is for us to be together, whether it is in person or in our virtual sanctuary. What a joy it is to gather together.
Shabbat Shalom. Hine matov umanayim. Indeed, how good, how pleasant, how wonderful it is that we are able to gather together on this Shabbat and celebrate, celebrate especially on this morning as Madeline Reutfeld, Maddie, becomes a bat mitzvah in front of our community that is gathered here, right here in person, but also gathered for anybody who is watching here on our Zoom as well. To our folks who are here, just a few reminders to help us get started on this morning. For the safety of all, we want to invite everybody to stay masked. And while we would love for everyone to be able to sing out loud, as loudly and with spirit as possible, on this Shabbat, we're going to invite you to sing in your hearts and allow Maddie to lead us in the congregational singing, the cantor as well, when he is able to. And for the rest of us, we are certainly going to be fully present in heart and spirit. For those who need, our facilities are right here in the building. And to help us with our morning, we want to invite you to turn your cell phones off. That part about congregational singing, if you are watching us on Zoom this morning, please belt your heart out. I think we can start to hear you from here. I know a lot of people are gathered to celebrate from all over the world, from Europe and Russia and Israel. So welcome, welcome, and Shabbat Shalom. To help us get started this morning, we want to invite Maddie up with her parents, with Felix and Arena, so that they can share their blessings as parents with her and give her the gift of a talit, a prayer shawl to help her Welcome her role as a bat mitzvah and to help us lead our service this morning. Maddie, come this way a little bit so your parents can be closer to the microphone. And you guys come closer to the microphone. Perfect. Dear Madeline, I'm so happy to have an opportunity to speak to you on this occasion, especially among family and friends who we are so glad to have with us today and those who we believe are with us in spirit. It is also a special privilege for us to celebrate this occasion with you, as it is our immediate family's first bar mitzvah. Therefore, I would be remiss if I did not say how grateful we are to your grandparents Vladimir and Leah Nemirovsky, and Mark and Rita Reutfeldt, who immigrated to this country where you could be free to practice your religion, express yourself, and explore your Jewish heritage. And thus, we're so incredibly instrumental in bringing about this event. We would also like to express our deep appreciation to the Temple Isaiah clergy and community that has significantly contributed to your Jewish education and has reinforced key values that are in alignment with our own. It is natural for me to give you this blessing to you on this special day as you have been nothing but a blessing to us in our lives. As a mother, I could not imagine a better daughter or be prouder as you have come to possess the best qualities from those that have raised you and those unique ones that make you who you are. The list is very long, but since I strongly suspect all of us do not want to be here until tomorrow, I will highlight just a few that I especially admire. You have a true love for learning. It is evidence in the way you challenge yourself academically, in the questions you raise around the dinner table, in writing and directing short skits at school assemblies, in how hard, hard you work to prepare for this special event, despite the challenging circumstances, and of course, in rereading Harry Potter books over 20 times, every time claiming you have gained a new perspective. More importantly, your passion for learning manifests itself in the way you enjoy sharing that knowledge with others through teaching. And this love of teaching certainly grew from delivering imaginary lectures to your stuffed animals at the age four, to creating a real tutoring program for students, to volunteering at a preschool helping children with disabilities, and has even extended to training your brother in various art forms, from hip hop, to cooking, to singing, despite his initial hesitancy to take part. You also possess a gift and passion for the arts. It is evident that you light up when you perform, whether choreographing your own dances for talent shows, or singing in various community choirs, or reciting your own poems at family birthday parties. It is so obvious to us that these activities bring you incredible joy, 
and in turn have allowed us to bask in that joy as well. Although the pandemic has certainly put a damper on your live performances, you have continued to perform virtually and we look forward to the time when we can once again attend your live performances on stage. However, beyond the academic and artistic, I'm most proud of the type of person that you have become, a special gem that is compassionate, loyal, and caring towards your family and friends, that engages, cares about the community around you, and that possesses your grandparents' resilient and generous spirit, coupled with a beautiful soul and dedication to goals that you set out for yourself. Those who know you also know that you love to write and that you immensely enjoy storytelling. Therefore, my wish for you is that as you start your journey now as an adult in the Jewish community and create your own story, it is one that is filled with more moments of happiness and laughter than sadness and tears, with more light than darkness, and with more extraordinary memories than uneventful ones. I wish that you always are surrounded by family and friends that share your core values and wish you well, that you continue your love of learning through not only academic pursuits, but also through experiencing different cultures and arts around the world. And finally, that your instinctive desire to help others and take action also remains a large part of who you are. This is all to say that we wish the very best for you, that we will be there for you, and of course that we love you and I love you. Jacob, do you want to come up and say a few words? We have gone through so much together, and now we are going through your bat mitzvah. You have been kind, sweet, generous, and of course, incredibly smart. You have accompanied me on most of my activities, including soccer and Boy Scouts, just to name a few. You have done beyond amazing in your writing skills, and I think you might become an author someday. I wish you a happy life with good health, food, water, and shelter. I hope you have enjoyed my speech, and you have my blessing for a good life in the future. Love you. Okay, I will be the last. <laughs> Dear Madeline, uh, your mother and I are very excited and honored to stand here today and give you our blessing on your bat mitzvah. Today marks a key transition for you from student to teacher. As a Jewish adult and community member, you will see the world from your unique perspective and you will add your voice to the chorus of other voices that make our faith so rich and vibrant with ideas. We have so much to learn from you. You're blessed with many talents. You're bright, you're creative, you're funny, you're athletic, and you're a natural leader. I could have spent the rest of my speech talking about your accomplishments, but your mom already covered most of it, and Jacob covered the rest. So instead, I want to focus on giving you a parent's advice. It's a, not easy for me. You see, I grew up in Soviet Union, where religion was frowned upon by society. My own family was very Jewish, but not very religious. And until I was a teenager, being Jewish was viewed more like a nationality, not as a religion. And in Soviet Union, it wasn't a good one. So since I came to United States, I had an opportunity and a blessing to learn the tenets of Jewish faith together with you and your younger brother, as we studied in parallel with you in the Yad Yad program and beyond. In theory, I now recognize what the sacred ceremony of Bat Mitzvah signifies. But just to make sure we are on the same page, let me share some of my understanding with you and with the community. First of all, you're now eligible to be called to the Torah reading and to lead the religious service. You know, this one is both desired and scary for unprepared, but you put a lot of effort into educating yourself as a Jewish woman, and from what I've seen yesterday and before, you can now do it in a very pleasant voice too. So consequently, you also consider it a part of Minyan, a quorum required for recitation of certain prayers. And think of it as your Jewish right to vote. You now have it. You also now have a right to get married, according to the Jewish law. Well, this one is very old. I think in modern times it means that you now have a right to be married to your books and, t and learning. <laughs> However, I hope to see you getting legally married too someday. 
soon after you receive your first paycheck as a professional. You also consider it a responsible party. Again, according to the Jewish law. In ancient world, that meant that you obtained the legal rights of an adult, such as right to own property or enter a contract. In the modern times, I'm sure we'll give you bigger rights and responsibilities as well. But no, you cannot buy yourself tons of makeup just yet. <laughs> and the last one, you now required to perform mitzvot or commandments, like any other Jewish adult woman. These include, but not limited to, lighting Shabbat candles, fasting on Yom Kippur, and performing acts of tzedakah. In fact, there are 613 rules to observe, which can be really overwhelming. But here's where my advice comes in. What I suggest you to do is this. Take religion like many Americans have learned to take our politicians. Seriously, but not too literally. <laughs> Question everything. Look for meaning. If you decide to observe half of the 613 commandments, do it by choice, not because you feel you have to. And don't forget that you now reach the age of moral and ethical responsibility. Try to always do the right things. By the way, I shall say, I know when you grow up, which according to the Jewish law starts today, you are going to become what you already are, an incredible, kind, thoughtful human being who is going to keep lighting up everything around you with your presence. And when you decide where you want to direct your time and talents, I hope you believe in yourself as much as all of us believe in you now. May you be blessed with wisdom, happiness, peace, and perhaps a little bit more motivation to do house chores. Mom and I are very proud of you. Mazel tov. share a translation of those words that were just sung, the words of our blessing known as Shech Yanu. Blessed are you, Adonai, our God, sovereign of the universe. Thank you for giving us life, sustaining us, and allowing us to reach just this moment. So Maddie, I know there's some wind around, and sometimes that's how it is with life. A little static gets in the way. And I know I've heard your voice. You are going to sing loudly and proudly so everyone can hear you, and hopefully now you're a little bit warmer with that talit around you as well. Maddie is going to begin by leading us in the Chatzit Kaddish. Yitkala vid kaddash emei rabba Be'oma divra chirutei v'amlich malchutei Be'chayechon uv'yomechon uv'chaye Techu beit Yisrael Ba'gala uv'izman kariv Ve'imeru amen Yechei shemei rabba mevorach Le'olam ulamei amaya Yitbarach Yitbarach v'yishtaba v'yitpa'ar V'yitramam v'yitnasei V'yitchadar v'yitalel v'yitalel Shemei dekudashara Berichu Leila min kol birchata v'shirata Tush bechata v'nechemata Tamiran be'oma Ve'im evru, amen We rise as we are able in body and spirit for our call to prayer for Baruch Hu. 
like you, Maddie. The custom here is to grab the tzitzit, these strings here that are at the bottom of our talit, and we gather them together. The idea being that each one of these strings and the knots, when you add them up in a very certain way, you get the number 613, like the 613 commandments in our Torah, reminding us as we sing the Shema and the continuing words of the Ve'a Hafta that faith is important but so are the actions, the mitzvot, that we do in our world. For those who are here and those who are following along online, we continue now with the singing of Micha Mocha, a song that celebrates our freedom, where we get to celebrate the fact that God redeemed us to be free, to be who we are, wherever we are, indeed to be Jews.
Once more for our Amida. Adonai, Sephatai Tifta, do Gia Gita Hila Teha. Adonai, open up my lips that my mouth may declare your praise. Adonai. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
שמחים קדושתך נקדיש, ושבחך אלוהינו מפינו לא ימוש לעולם ועד. ברוך אתה אדוני האל הקדוש. And we take these next few moments for our own personal and private prayer. piece of our service, the moment that Maddie is going to chant from Torah. And we begin this ritual, this uh, part of the service, with a ritual of passing the Torah from generation to generation. So I'm going to invite first Jacob to come and open the ark, and then I'm going to invite Vladimir Nemirovsky, Mark and Rita Reutfeld, of course, Felix and Irina, to line up to pass the Torah to Maddie. So, Vladimir, hold on just one moment. I'm going to have you take it out in just a second. Maddie, what an amazing moment this is. As your parents talked about, what an amazing thing it is that you become bat mitzvah today, the first in your family. Wow. And it is not coincidence that Torah landed here today. It was through your grandparents' journey to this country. It was through your parents' insistence on you and your brother becoming educated as Jews and to learn what it means, as your parents both so beautifully spoke about in their speeches, to become that adult member, that, that mature member, that knowledgeable and responsible member of this community. And on top of it all, you are blessed with a gorgeous, gorgeous voice, which we are going to be so delighted to hear. In the Bible, it describes King David as a sweet singer of Israel, and I believe that 
moniker could be put on you as well. Indeed, you are a sweet singer of Israel, and you are giving us such an amazing gift with your voice today. And so in a moment, we are going to pass this Torah through the generations, but please know that this gen Torah passing is not going to end with you. We have high expectations that you will keep the tradition of Torah alive wherever you go throughout your life. You won't physically be carrying the Torah wherever you go, but in your heart and in your mind, you will take all of its teachings and our history as a Jewish people and ensure that it reaches the next generation. And so now it is with great pride that I'll invite Vladimir to take the Torah out of the Ark as we pass the Torah from generation to generation. We are gifts and we are blessings. We are history. invite Maddie to lead us in the Shema in the Torah service. your grandparents to return to their seats now and your parents and your brother will help you undress the Torah. of a holy space and indeed that is what we are doing in this very moment we are building holy space with one another but as I think everyone here is aware that Maddie's original date to become a bat mitzvah was a number of weeks ago and we had to postpone it due to our local stay-at-home order so what we're going to be doing is going back to that moment from a few weeks ago from the Torah portion known as Ve'ira and that is the portion that Maddie is going to be bringing to us this morning um, it is quite uh, an interesting portion, a lot going on. In this portion, this is where Moses travels back to Egypt with Aaron, his brother, to confront Pharaoh and to speak to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. It is in this portion, indeed, that we hear about the first of the plagues. And so what Maddie is going to do is she's going to share with us from the book of Exodus, the second book of Torah, from Chapter 7, verse 8 and following. After she shares the Hebrew, I will be sharing a translation. And just in a little bit, she'll be sharing her interpretation of Torah as well. For the first Aliyah, we call on Maddie's grandfather, Vladimir Nemirovsky. Ya amor, haolel aliyah la Torah. Good 
bring it out of So you'll come and stand next to Maddie. Does she have the English reading? Yes. Your presence feels creation. You have enlightened this path, this wisdom of Torah, given it to the Jewish people as a particular way. Blessed are you, merciful one, who gives the Torah to the Jewish people. Our translation this morning is the eternal said to Moses and Aaron when Pharaoh speaks to you and says produce your marvel you shall say to Aaron take your rod and cast it down before Pharaoh it shall turn into a serpent so Moses and Aaron came before Pharaoh and did just as the eternal had commanded Aaron cast down his rod in the presence of Pharaoh and his courtiers and it turned into a serpent Your presence feel creation. This Torah is a teaching of truth, whole and balance, and from it comes internal life for the people who embrace it. Blessed are you, merciful one, who gives this Torah to the Jewish people. Amen. Amen. We'll invite you to come on back to your seat, Vladimir. And for the next Aliyah, I call on Maddie's grandmother, Rita Reutfeld. Ta'amod ha'olal aliyah la Torah. Baruchu et adenai nchamvorach. Baruch adenai hamvorach le'olam va'ed. Baruch adenai nchamvorach le'olam va'ed. Baruch ata Adonain, Elohenu melech haolam, Asher bachar banyu mikol haamim, Venatan lanyu et torato, Baruch ata Adonai, Noten hatora. Amen. Amen. 
ונון השווים, ויעשו גם הם ארטומים מצרים, בלוחותיכם כאלה, וישליכו נשמותיכו, ויהיו לתנינים, ויפלו מטה אחרון את מטותם. וחודקו וחזק לב פרעה ולא שמע עליכם כאשר דיבר אדוני. Then Pharaoh for his part summoned the wise men and the sorcerers and the Egyptian magicians in turn did the same with their spells. Each cast down his rod and they turned into serpents. But Aaron's rod swallowed their rods. Yet Pharaoh's heart stiffened, and he did not heed them, as the Eternal had said. Baruch atah Adonai, elachinu melech haolam, asher natan lanyu torat emet, vechnayei olam natabituchinu. Baruch atah Adonai, Amen. Thank you. For the third Aliyah, we now call on Maddie's parents, Irina and Felix. Yamdu haolim laliyah la Torah. Baruch Adonai Hamvarach le'alam va'ed. And the Eternal said to Moses, Pharaoh is stubborn. He refuses to let the people go. Go to Pharaoh in the morning as he is coming out to the water and station yourself before him at the edge of the Nile, taking with you the rod that turned into a snake and say to him, the Eternal, the God of the Hebrews sent me to you to say, let my people go that they may worship me in the wilderness. But you have paid no heed until now. Baruch ata Adonai, Eloheinu melech alam, Asher natalan yutorat emet, Vichayam al natabet, Natan yubet alcheinu. Baruch ata Adonai, Notein ha-Torah. Amen. And now for the fourth aliyah. Oh, stay up there, mom and dad. <laughs> <laughs> and one of you is going to hold the blessing for Maddie as we call her as a bat mitzvah for the very first time to the Torah. Tamod, 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 habachura, bat mitzvah, chazak. 
Baruch Adonai Hamburach Leolam Vahed. Baruch Adonai Hamburach Leolam Vahed. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam. Asher Bachar Banyu Mikuch Alamim. Benatan Lanyu Et Torato. Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah. Thus says the Eternal, by this you shall know that I am the Eternal. See, I shall strike the water in the Nile with the rod that is in my hands, and it will be turned into blood. And the fish in the Nile will die. The Nile will stink so that the Egyptians will find it impossible to drink the water of the Nile. And the Eternal said to Moses, say to Aaron, take your rod and hold out your arm over the waters of Egypt its rivers, its canals, its ponds, all its bodies of water, that they may turn to blood. There shall be blood throughout the land of Egypt, even in vessels of wood and stone. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Olam Asher Natan Manyu Torah Temet Vechayei Olam Nata Betuchinu Baruch Adonai Noten HaTorah Amen Asher Koach that was beautiful. Thank you for sharing your Torah with us. And now with the Torah of the, of out among our community, we take advantage of this moment to pray for healing, healing of all of those who are in need of that healing of mind, of body, and spirit. In particular, in this community that is gathered here, we think of Raisa Gelfand, Leon Kersonsky, Michael Kersonsky, and Irina Kushnerskaya. For all of those that we are holding in our hearts, we pray for their healing as well. Thank you. 
with you to rise once more as you are able as we dress the Torah and return it to the ark. Jacob will invite you to join your family on the bima as we dress the Torah. the Torah chanted aloud before us, we've heard its translation, but now Maddie is going to share for us her interpretation of its words and its message for today. From a young age, I remember being taught about leaders, being surrounded by them and by the impacts that they had made. I remember idolizing their courage and their remarkable ability to lead. I learned their birthdays, their accomplishments, and their struggles, all very important things. But something I was never taught was what actually made them a leader. Was it something they were born with? Was it something they developed? Was it some particular trait that was required? These questions still remain in my head today. In the Torah portion that I read, God commanded Moses to go before Pharaoh and tell him to let the Israelites go. God commanded Moses to show Pharaoh that God was behind Moses and the Israelites. God commanded Moses to put his rod into the Nile and turn the water in the Nile River into blood, the first of ten plagues. Notice, each of the past three sentences begin with God commanded. There are no qualities of leadership shown by Moses. In this portion, God commands and Moses executes. A good leader is not a great follower. Many could take commands from God. Where is the leadership? What I have just said raises a very conflicting question. Why did God choose Moses to lead the Israelites? What made him the leader that God needed him to be and deliver the Israelites from Egypt? Again, the question of leadership arises. What made him stand out from all the Israelites that God could have chosen? In the Torah, when Moses saw a burning bush that was not consumed, for it carried the angel of the Lord, he stopped and marveled. When the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to look, God called out to him from the bush, indicating that it was only when God saw that Moses had stopped to gaze at the unexplainable sight of a burning bush that God chose him to be the leader. Perhaps others passed by the same bush, Perhaps if they had turned aside and questioned the unusual sight, they might have been leading the Israelites, 
not Moses. But they didn't, and Moses did. Yet, while curiosity is an important trait in a leader, is it important enough to solely define one? Much later in the Torah comes a time when the Israelites begin to lose faith in God. Moses was taking a long time coming down from Mount Sinai, and the Israelites felt the need to have a present leader. So they came to Aaron and asked him to make them a god who shall go before them. Using gold rings that he cast in a mold, he made them a molten calf, and they then worshipped the calf as God. Furthermore, they credited the molten calf from delivering them from Egypt. When God saw this, God was deeply angered. God told Moses he wanted to destroy the Israelites and make Moses a great nation. God was giving Moses the opportunity to have his own mighty nation. Now this is a point where Moses changes character. If he truly was not a leader, he would again take God's command. Doing what God told him to do was not only easy, but he had the opportunity to gain a nation of his own. Yet Moses told God no. Moses reasoned with God and asked for forgiveness on behalf of the Israelites. Moses put the well-being of the Israelites above his own self-interest. He did not succumb to the temptations of great power and instead proved his leadership. Before this, I did not understand why God chose Moses to lead the Israelites. Curiosity in taking orders is not something I define as leadership. But when a person stands up to their superior and advocates for their followers, it not only shows leadership, but it shows bravery. To contradict God, you have to be 100% certain that he is wrong. But you also have to be 1,000% certain that you are right and the things that you are saying and doing have greater purpose. Moses believed in something bigger. He believed beyond himself and his purpose. He believed in his followers, even when they had lost their belief in him. He could have once again taken God's command. He could have taken his own nation. But Moses valued his followers' well-being and the vision of the promised land over God's command, showing a measure of leadership that I hope I can one day replicate. Too many times we take a command that we do not want to take. Too many times we choose the simple option of being a follower and not a leader. Too many times we are given multiple opportunities to do what we believe is right, but choose to follow others because we are afraid of the pressure and the possible consequences from those who disagree. I believe Moses was always a leader. I believe he just needed time, experience, and the right opportunity to get him to the point where he was able to embrace his leadership. In a world where the uncertainty of tomorrow and the scarcity of forethought threatens many, we must follow the example set by Moses. Do not let the fear of an inconsistent stability cause you to lose faith and hope in the things that you believe in, as the Israelites did. Let it bring out the inner leader that you have inside of yourself. Let it inspire you to work toward a better future. And most importantly, do not suppress the growing leader inside of yourself because of fear. Thank you. In addition to everything that Maddie has done today, from leading us so beautifully in prayer, from chanting Torah, from teaching from Torah, she has a deep understanding that becoming about mitzvah is more than just what happens at temple on a Shabbat morning. Becoming about mitzvah, as we've talked about so many times this morning, is really about taking on that new responsibility. And so she is going to share with us uh, her mitzvah project, the uh, activity she engaged in to make a difference in this world. In lieu of a traditional haftarah, she will take the teachings of the prophets and share their teaching with us. And so we'll begin with the blessing before the haftarah, and then we'll hear her mitzvah project. <laughs> Israel, 
For my mitzvah project, I took on a few incoming 5th and 6th graders over the summer and taught them writing techniques that I felt would be helpful to them in their middle school years. Because of the coronavirus crisis, many students lost valuable time in education. The transition from elementary to middle school has always been a tough transition for many students, socially and academically. Because of coronavirus, that transition was made considerably harder. Language arts, specifically writing, is not a very straightforward subject. Unlike math, there is not one right answer. There are many different ways to write, and with each mind thinking independently, it is one of the hardest subjects to learn and to teach. That is why I felt the need to help those beginning the difficult transition into middle school develop their writing abilities. Being Jewish, giving back is not only a nice thing to do, but it is an obligation. I believe the purpose of a mitzvah project is to teach young adults that obligation and to show them how it connects to being Jewish. When I chose teaching writing to be my mitzvah project, I not only did it to help others improve their writing, I also did it to help myself learn that giving back to your community is an important part of life. Baruch Atadonai Elohinu Melech Olam Tzur Kul HaOlamim Tzadik Bechul HaDorot Ha'el Ha'neman Ha'omer Ve'oseh Ha'mdaber Ha'mkayim Shekul Tavarov El Medvot Zedek Ha'or HaTorah Ve'or HaVadah direction. You could stay right there. Yeah, and close the book. Wonderful. <laughs> Perfect. Perfect. I am so proud of you. And I know I say the same for Cantor Corn and for all of our clergy and all of our teachers and everyone who's helped you along the way. I know I say it for your parents and grandparents and your entire family and community gathered here and, and of course watching from afar. We have so much, not so much pride for you. You did it. I was blown away by your brilliance today, but of course, all throughout the process, and of course, uh, the beautiful way that you led us. I know that this was difficult, especially in the midst of a pandemic. So thank you so much for sticking with it and, and bringing always your positive self to the table. You are a role model for all of us. I really did love studying with you. It was so amazing over these past few months you always asked interesting questions, and you really dug into the text, especially as you shared about this question of leadership. When you weren't satisfied with the image of Moses as it was portrayed in your Parsha and your Torah portion, you wanted more. So that's what we did. We dug in and we looked at the broader, I know, sorry about this sun there. <laughs> we looked at the broader image of Moses throughout the story of Torah, beyond your Torah portion. We studied all sorts of Torah portions, and we really dug into what did it mean to be a leader. And you did what great leaders do, right? You continued to push and to study and to refine your opinion. You brought curiosity and determination to our study and to the table, and you helped all of us today to see that leadership is not just, there's not just one way to be a leader, right? And you lifted up a very important value, that of standing up when it is right, when it is most important, and also standing up especially when it's about taking care of the people that you serve or the people that you care about. Moses, we know, is so faithful to his people, even though maybe not at all times they deserve it, as you described, 
And Moses stood up to God. I know that when people think of you, I know in the time that I've gotten to know you, I know this, that you are somebody who is faithful. You are somebody who is a loyal friend, as your parents shared. You are somebody who is kind and compassionate and leads with your heart. In an era where sometimes it's just easier to go with the flow and at an age, certainly, when sometimes all we want to do is fit in, you remind us that that is not what is most important. Instead, it's about sticking true to what you know is important and sticking true to the people who are around you. We heard about that in your mitzvah project, right? You care, you are kind, you help people. Being a leader is somebody who leads from a place of compassion, right? Who people, somebody who makes hard decisions even when it's uncomfortable to do so, to help people. As I know you know, and we do too, there's a lot out there in the world that is broken right now. But I feel so much better about the world because I know that you are in it and you are helping to bring repair and helping to bring love. So what I wanna tell you, Maddie, is to keep doing just that, to keep being brave and keep asking big questions, hard questions, keep being courageous and keep being kind, keep being you, the leader that you are. I know that you come from a long line of compassionate and brave and resilient people all the way back to Moses, but also some of the folks that are sitting right here and beyond. Your own family took a lot of risks to be here and to be who they are during dangerous times. And you are the next in a long line of leaders, a long line of folks who are brave and resilient. And indeed, you are gonna forge your own path as a bat mitzvah and as a strong young woman. So thank you for bringing you and bringing your gift to our community. Speaking of gifts, there's a number of gifts we're gonna share with you after our service, including a kiddush cup, so much more. But in this moment, I wanna share one more gift with you. It's the blessing of our people known as Birpata Koanim. I wanna invite your parents to come and stand with you as Cantor Korn and I deliver it to you. May God bless you, may God bless you and protect you. May God bless Maddie, may the light of God's presence always shine upon you, shine through you, and may God be gracious to you. May God's presence always be with you, with your family here and beyond. And may you know the gift of peace, the gift of shalom, the gift of wholeness. And let us all say, Amen. Amen. And you guys can all With blessings all around us, we turn now to some of our concluding prayers. We begin with the words of Elenu once again rising as we are able. Elenu l'shabeach l'adon ha'kol L'atet g'dula l'yotze b'reshit Sh'lo asanu k'goye ha'aratzot Velo samanu k'mishpachot ha'adama Shalom sam khalkenu khaham wa gora lenu khol hamonam wa anakhnu khoreim u mishtakhavim u modim lifne malakh malkhe hamlakhim hakadosh baruchu 
ונאמר והיה אדוני למלך על כל הארץ ביום ההוא, ביום ההוא יהיה אדוני אחד ושמו, ושמו, ושמו אחד Let us remain standing as we turn now to words of Kaddish. We know many are here in spirit, and so we bring their memories close to our hearts. We remember Leah Nebaraski, Simon Nebaraski, Miriam Nebaraski, Zinida Gelfand, Yasef Gelfand, Boris Gelfand, and Ala Gelfand. May all of their memories indeed be for blessing and anyone else whom we are remembering today. Yit gadal v'yikada shamei rabba be'alma divra chirute v'yamlik malchute v'chai echon v'yom echon v'chai d'kol b'yit Yisrael v'agala v'yizman kariv v'yamru amen Yehe shmei rabba mevarach le'alam u'lalmeo maya Yitzvarach v'yishtabach v'yitpa'ar v'yitromam v'yitnaseh v'yitadar v'yitaleh v'yitalal shamei d'kudisha v'richu la'ela min kol berchata v'shirata tush berchata v'nechamata dam miran be'alma v'yimru amen yehe shlama rabba min shamaya v'chayim aleinu ve'al kol yisrael v'yimru amen ose shalom b'mromav hu ya'ase shalom Aleinu ve'el kol Yisrael, v'yimru, amen. Ose shalom b'imromav, u'ya ase shalom. Aleinu ve'el kol Yisrael, v'yimru, amen. Once again, we say Mazal Tov to Maddie and her family. We're going to invite you to come on up. You can actually stand right in front of the table, but that way everyone on camera can see you. Jacob, you can join them as well. As we sing the word Simon Tov and Mazal Tov, wishing you much congratulations. What an amazing day this is for your family, for the Jewish people, and for all of us in attendance today. Simon Tov, Mazal Tov, Mazal Tov. Shalom, everyone. Everyone on Zoom, hello, thank you very much for coming. And thank you for joining us.